Oh. Oh god. Okay. Um, come in, come in close and personal. We need to get, we need to get nice and close for this one. Okay. Just ignore my decorative bath towel in the background. Um, you need to understand going into this video. Okay. There are exactly two kinds of people in the world. I don't care what anyone else told you. Consider yourself in the matrix, Neo, because there's only two. All right. That's it. You got people that know in their heart and truly believe that Monster King Orochi is the single most badass creature to ever be drawn in a comic strip, either before or in the future, any of our possible parallel futures that may or may not exist in the multiverse, okay? So you're either that kind of person, or you're a squirrel. You need to pick a side right now. In fact, even some squirrels are starting to come over to the side that Monster King Orochi is the single most badass creature ever exists. So there's only actually one kind of person in the world. We can all we can all be unified by the belief that this mofo right here is the most epic villain to ever be devised. Okay, all right. Now I don't know how well my descriptive adjectives are gonna work for this. It's hard to describe him but I'm gonna try, okay? I'll try my damnedest. This is my video on Monster King Orochi. Oh my god, everybody, Monster King Orochi, this is gonna be great! Okay, oh, a little bit of that, oh, a little bit of this. Oh, he has to have a sword, he always has to have a sword, okay. Do you guys remember when you were little kids? And, you know, I don't know what anime you grew up with or what shows you grew up with. I grew up with, like, Dragon Ball and Yu Yu Hakusho. And, you know, me and my friends would watch those on Toonami every day. And uh, when you're a little kid, you know, you, you create your own characters or your own villains, or your own monsters in that series and stuff. Uh, my custom-made Saiyan was uh, a Saiyan by the name of Rapid. And he was Vegeta's older brother who was, like, 10,000 million times stronger than Vegeta. And he was, like, way super cool because he... He was awesome, you know? Like, his Gallic gun could destroy entire universes. Yeah, take that, Vegeta. You know, you, you would come up with designs like that. You would just keep piling on ridiculous attributes to creatures like, oh, he's gonna be a dragon, but he's gonna be a cyborg dragon with a katana, and he could fly, and he can, uh, he could shoot laser beams out of his hands, and his hands are actually more dragons, and, and there you go. There you go right there. Okay, now, you know... You might think after a certain point that just gets overkill, you know, just like, okay, there's way too much shit going on here at once, you know, it's too busy. Keep your characters a little bit more simplistic, you know what I mean? Alright, well, take those childhood ideas and then give them to a professional artist and then you get this! You get that. What the hell am I even looking at? That is so cool. It's like, it's like sensory overload when I look at this guy. Like in his base form when he's just like a chilling out devil demon. And I don't even know if that's the appropriate way to describe it. I, I was going to say demon, but come on, man. This guy is way higher rank than demon. Devil, okay, that gets you a little bit closer. But no, this is like, imagine if the devil ruled over like Earth's hell. And then the devil had a boss that was even more of a hard ass that ruled over, like, the Milky Way Galaxy's collective hells. And then that guy had a boss. That's Orochi, who's, like, the universal devil, you know? Like, it doesn't matter where you go, you gotta deal. He's, like, under this guy's purview, all right? He looks pretty badass just like this. But then he fights Garo, and it's just... It, the insanity gets cranked up beyond 11. Alright, like, you start seeing, like, dragons just popping out. Like, you really get to see him in detail in that fight. Like, before he was just kind of chilling out in his throne room, you could tell the guy was thick. Like, he was huge, and you could see his design, the armor and the horns and his, like, cracked face and the demon eyes. You could see that. But it wasn't really until he started fighting against Garo, you got into detail, okay? Like, the dude wears armor, but underneath that armor, there's, like, a bunch of, like, dragon snakes that each have their own face, that each have their own eyes and mouth, and that can breathe fire and freaking lava, and they're just, like, they're basically, like, just thousands of these snakes, tens of thousands, maybe, just coalesce together to create in just human form, all right? 
and then the fight gets, you know, cranked up, and then you get to see him, like, his face, like, expands outwards, so he's, like, way bigger than he even originally is, you know, appeared to be, and he was already huge, like, the guy was, like, the size of a freaking skyscraper to begin with, but now it's just, like, he's, he's just, like, mega evolving, like, it's just, like, hundreds, thousands of these snake dragons coming out, all spewing magma like a freaking fire hose everywhere, and, and it's just... You have to sit back, and you're just like, holy... Do you know how hard it is to be blown away by just static pages of manga? Alright, like, there's a lot of really cool stuff that happens in manga, okay? I'm not even debating that, alright? But it's like, did you see Endgame? Did you... I'm not gonna spoil it, but spoiler, there's a final battle in Endgame, and it's pretty epic, alright, alright? So, I'm watching Endgame, right? And I'm sitting there, and I'm taking in this visual and audio medium, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm seeing everything across the screen, I'm hearing it, badass themes in the background, you know, things whizzing around everywhere, and I'm in my seat watching Endgame like, oh, THIS IS AMAZING! You know? That's significantly harder of an effect to achieve on a fandom from just black and white images on a page. You gotta use a little bit of your imagination, you know? You gotta imagine how, like, the transitions between each panel go, how the characters are moving, maybe throw in your favorite theme music in the background, the sound effects, the characters getting hit, how the choreography of the fight works, you know? Um, you know, Murata does a great job of depicting all of that, but, you know, it's, it's black and white images. You gotta kind of fill in some of the gaps yourself, right? But that fight was so unbelievably heavy metal. Not just heavy metal, like, like, uber heavy metal. It's a new genre that was just invented for the purposes of depicting Orochi. Um, you know, I I'm sitting there reading it like, I need a break, I need to go get a drink and, like, go outside and get some fresh air to clear my head because that, that was, like, sensory overload. Alright, all the crap he did. And you know what? You know what? It works beautifully with this manga. All right, because One Punch Man is all about over-the-top characters, personality-wise, ability-wise, strength, raw power-wise, you know? Like, you got characters being flung into the moon, you got Boros with his, like, you know, collapsing Star Roaring Cannon! You got, you know, all these S-Class heroes that are ridiculous in their own right, you know, Puri Puri Prisoner with his love vibrator death point, it, you know, like, all that crap going on. And, and then it's like... You know, Orochi was not in the original webcomic, okay? So I'm believing when, you know, Murata came to one is like, I want to draw your manga, I want to do it this way. And then, you know, one and Murata, they work together trying to figure out, like, okay, what's going to come in? So, like, like Siru didn't appear in the webcomic either. One drew him for the purposes of Murata's version, right? The same thing with Orochi. One came up with it, and Murata draw it, and it's just like, you know what? You know what? This is One Punch Man. You can't have a character call himself the King of the Monsters without it being this ridiculous and over the top, all right? A lot of other manga and a lot of other works of fiction in general, like, you know, you're, you're gonna have a badass final villain, and I know what you're gonna say. If you're a fan of the webcomic, I know what you're gonna say. Like, Orochi's not the final villain, it's actually Psycho. I get it, I get it. But a main villain, a major villain in the series, okay? You know, you're going to have a major villain. They usually depict them a little bit more, like, compressed, reserved. Like, look at Aizen in Bleach. Aizen does not look all that physically intimidating. Well, his hair does a little bit. He just looks like a mild-mannered Josh Groban-looking dude. You know, it's just like, whatever. But he's actually wicked strong. Um, you know, like, like you, you, you imagine that. Even, like, One Piece. You got Doflamingo in One Piece. He's like this really tall, ripped dude that he wears, a, like, a, a, a feathered pink boa. It's just like, yeah, it's up to the author to depict, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Physically, they might not be the size of a skyscraper or a mountain and can take a chunk out of the earth, but they're strong enough in their own right, right? And that's on the author, like Kubo with Bleach or Oda with One Piece to depict that. With with Murata and One, it's just like, oh no, no, this is One Punch Man. You want King of the Monsters? We'll give you a King of the Monsters, mo you know, here it comes, full throttle, you better be ready. Spoiler alert, you're freaking not, okay? Like, holy crap, that last chapter 
in the Murata version, when Saitama is just wandering through the base, and Psychos is dealing with Tatsumaki, and it's like, ah, come and get to me, and Lord Orochi, save me! And he doesn't come, and it's like, what the hell? And then you cut over to Saitama just witnessing just literal hell breaking apart at his feet, and this thing just claws its way up these giant dragons, each, by the way, you gotta understand how big this dude is. Alright, he looks big here, but he gets even bigger when he, like, unfolds, alright? This is pre-fold, that's, that's the official term, pre-fold Orochi here, alright? Post-fold Orochi, each one of those snake dragon leviathans things already can, like, dragon level threat wipe out a city or two, and these things are in the hundreds of maybe thousands, and they come up and just grab the sides of the hole that Saitama blasted in the freaking base, and he just rises up, and magma and fire spewing everywhere, and it's erupting out of him, and he's just like, Rah! God! Listen, listen, you might be thinking I'm having a freaking panic attack or something right now. Is there any other way to properly describe this dude? Is there any other way? How else am I gonna do this? How else? Am I gonna sit here and just be like, yeah, Monster King Orochi, he is a pretty awesome character. He's huge, and he spews magma, and he he's also intelligent, and he can learn martial arts, and he copied Garo, and he used his snakes to mimic the flip fist of crushing water rock, whatever, and, and that was really cool, and he, he can use his antenna to attack, and he stabbed Garo with that, and that was a pretty cool scene. No! No! You... I apologize, all headphone users out there. <laughs> yeah, well, you lost your hearing about 20 minutes back. Um, all right, so that that that's the concept for Orochi. All right, get like a five-year-old kid, give him a crap ton of pixie sticks, you know, and just like okay, create a monster. It's like okay, all right, he's gonna be a, a giant demon, devil, dragon thing, and uh, okay, what does he have for hands? Uh, he has dragons for hands. Okay, what does he do? What's his special attack? Um, uh, magma. He spews magma, but he can also like unfold his mouth into like rows and rows of teeth, like a penguin's mouth. You ever see the inside of a penguin's mouth? Things are terrifying. Yeah, that's the legit inside of a penguin's mouth. Yeah, if please don't get reincarnated as a fish in the Arctic. That's all I'm saying. If that turns out to be true, you know. Anyway, you know he has rows of teeth and he opens up and he unfolds and he can launch like a like a like a death cannon out of his mouth listen all right you know what else I think about Orochi, like, why his existence, you know, is now rather not than on in the webcomic? You know, there is a distinct lack of god-level threats in One Punch Man, all right? Um, and you could say the reason for that is, oh, okay, it's very rare for those kind of threats to emerge, for a monster to get that strong, or a threat to be that, to be that large. Okay, fair enough. But you have to also remember, god-level threats, and, and threat levels in general, I made a whole video about this, they are just to, you know, depict the level of danger that a certain monster or threat is to the entire world, okay? So they're not there to, like, measure power levels of individual monsters exactly, like, not, not exactly, just in a broad sense, all right? So if you're threat level dragon, okay, that monster can destroy multiple cities, okay? If you're threat level god, you have the potential to wipe out all of humanity, or the just obliterate the entire planet. So if you get a meteor that's big enough heading toward the Earth, it could be disaster level God, all right? It doesn't have anything to do with like the actual malice or the thoughts of the thing or the entity. It's just the exact threat level it poses to humanity, okay? So I like to think Boros was God level. It was on record that he's just like dragon plus or like just above dragon. But if we're gonna take Boros's claim literally, you know, this attack is strong enough to wipe out the Earth or wipe out any, any life on it. You know, the collapsing star roaring caring. If we're going to take that at face value, then then yeah. Yeah, he is a god-level threat, right? But that doesn't mean Saitama's going to have any more of a problem dealing with him. It doesn't mean like, oh, you're god-level threat. Saitama's in for a real slobber knocker now. Nothing like that. You know, Saitama still beat Boros with relatively little effort, right? So... When it comes to Orochi, uh, yeah, god level threat, freaking easy, I think that's the point of him, just cause we don't get very many confirmed god levels, like we've never seen a monster be introduced in the series, maybe Garo, maybe monster form Garo, I don't even think it happened with him though, where we actually get to see, like, the caption underneath that creature being, you know, like, Monster King Orochi, threat level, god!
Like, we've never gotten that. I think maybe with Monster with Monster Form Garo, maybe. I don't remember seeing the actual box. I know Garo claimed to be a god level threat, but I'm gonna... Hey, th once again, I'm fine if he was. I'm just saying it was never confirmed. So, I think Orochi is going to represent that. He's gonna be the first, like, legitimate classified... No, no, this isn't Dragon Plus. This isn't like, ah, maybe we have to go back to the office and we have to recalculate threat levels. No. No, this is going to be straight up, no debate. You look at this thing. If the heroes, I mean, if the, yeah, if the Hero Association could properly see Orochi, because he's usually underground, he doesn't usually go outside very often. If, if they were to see this thing and see what he could do, they would immediately classify him as a god level threat. Like, no way. You know? Now, the way that one specified this to uh, Murata was. Orochi is a strong enough monster because he usually like okay you could design him you know however you want and everything but it's like the general the general storyboards are here I think that's what one does like here's the general storyboards of like Suru take it away but the way that one specified this he's like he's strong enough to take a few hits from Saitama all right so if you guys are thinking like this is gonna be like a situation like remember in Fairy Tale during the Avatar arc when Avatar summoned this giant literal war god, like a giant portal opened in the sky and a war god with a giant F-off buster sword came out and just like, I am a war god! And then it's like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? And then Natsu just goes up and punches it once and it explodes. And it's like, oh yeah, I've seen that so much. I've seen that so many freaking times where it's like, oh man, look at this giant imposing creature creature. It must be like the strongest thing ever. What are we going to do about it? And then it, it gets destroyed very quickly or it turns out like, oh no, the giant huge Goliath was just a, a cover for this tiny man who was the real villain this whole time was the puppet master, you know? And we kind of yeah, we kind of get that a little bit here with Orochi, because Psychos and Goro Goro was the one controlling Orochi the whole time, or created Orochi, so Psychos is really the one pulling the strings. But that doesn't lessen the disaster level and the power that Orochi has, alright? Orochi is still stronger than Psychos, You because, you know, Goro Goro was being destroyed and everything, and it's like, oh, Orochi, come and save me, you know? So, yeah, and, and there's no way. This thing is a world-ending disaster. If, if Goro Goro just decided to just screw everything and just let him rampage in the world and there were no S-Class heroes present, Orochi could obliterate all of humanity easily. That, that wouldn't even be a problem if the S-Class weren't there. Even the S-Class, like, disregard most of the S-Class if we're being honest here. Like, they can't do Metal Bat, Tank Top Master... Maybe Watchdog Man, but they no no they can't do shit to Orochi. There's no way. There's no way. Metal Bat, Tank Top Master, Puri Puri Prisoner. They're not even scratching Orochi. It's not happening. Okay. The only people that you would even consider in that ball game are Tatsu and Blast, and that might actually be it. Like Metal Knight, I can't even see him doing anything. Okay, King. King, ironically, because knowing King's tremendous amount of luck, you know, King would just be like, uh, all right, uh, he, he's like basically just shivering so much, like it's like it literally vibrates space around him and rips open a parallel universe that Orochi gets sucked into. And then it's just like, oh, all right, my, my shaking and cowardice and heart palpitations paid off for something. But no, 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 King wouldn't be able to do anything either. No, like, Blast and Tatsumaki, and even Tatsumaki, that's like, I'm talking about S-classes that could potentially, like, like, injure him slightly. Like, the equivalent of a paper cut to Orochi. Because, like, even in that situation, like, you saw how, how wrecked Garo got there. That was awesome, because Garo's getting beat down so much, and you can tell Orochi's not even really trying, like, he's still just nonchalantly beating the crap out of him, and, uh, he gets back up, and, you know, Garo's like, let me, let me show you technique, 
And then Orochi's like, yeah, I have that too, idiot. Like, oh, crap. And so it's like, yeah, he's just as intelligent or on similar levels where he can also mimic martial arts styles and create styles up on the spot just to deal with certain threats like Garo. And what happened with Garo? He got pounded into the side of a wall like a freaking pancake. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, Tatsumaki, she could throw up barriers and stuff to stop the magma flow and things, but I, I don't think she's going to be able to defeat Orochi. There's still so much we don't know about Blast that it's an enigma if he could deal with it. Um, you know, and you might bring up, and people bring this up a lot, they bring up like, you know, Blast couldn't even defeat Sente Choro. He couldn't even defeat Elder Centipede. So he's actually way weaker than Saitama. You guys don't know how that fight went. You seem to believe that, like, Sente Choro came out and then Blast fought him full power and then he was, he left injured, Sente Choro retreated injured. You literally, like, it could have happened similar to, like, Saitama where, you know, Sente Choro comes out and just like, Whoa, I'm ravaging a town. Maybe Blast was out at the movies and he walks out and this giant centipede's coming at him and he's just like, you know, wags his face and just boom blast half a freaking sente choro's body away and he's like damn you blast i will retreat now and he retreats and blast is just like wait what i thought i was swatting a fly i wasn't even serious because that's happened with saitama before like saitama freaking normal punched boros into a wall and if saitama like let, let me put it this way after that first punch where saitama just Boom! Floors freaking Boros, and then his armor explodes and everything, and maybe a few more punches after that, where he just like, boom, boom, and locks off his arm, and he regenerates. Let's say about halfway through that fight, before things get too DBZ crazy yet, Saitama just decides, you know what? This, this is freaking boring. I'm out. Later. And then he just walks away and retreats. And Boros... Boros would probably swear a vendetta against Saitama for the rest of his existence. And just like, Saitama, you left during our battle with me injured. I swear I will find you. Even though Saitama didn't even bother. Like, he could wipe out Boros with one serious punch if he seriously wanted to. You know? So, uh, that's the situation there with Blast. So, I'm thinking Blast might be able to stand up to a Orochi, right? Now, with Saitama, I have no doubts that he's gonna defeat Orochi, alright? But this fight is gonna be so damn cool. It's gonna be, like, we don't have to worry about the, the war god fairy tale dilemma. That's what I'm trying to get across here, alright? Because one already made that explicitly clear. We're not doing this, like, I am Orochi spewing magma! Like, a thousand snakes just attack him at once while he charges up his death laser, and Saitama's just like, be quiet, you idiot. Boom! <laughs> Dead. You know, like, we don't have to worry about that, alright? We don't have to worry about that, because I think even Juan and Moroda, they know how much of a letdown that that would be once you introduce this into your manga, alright? So, yeah, you know, I'm just happy... I'm just happy to see a creature like like Orochi for once, you know, because it's always nice to see the villains that are like, I am calm and collected. I'm the, I, I may appear to just be a normal human, but I have God level powers and everything like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm very intricate and I have a great character arc and I'm sniving and conniving and I twirl my wine, you know, that's really cool to see that. But, you know, every now and then, it's cool to see, no, let's just go balls to the wall awesome with it. Let's just depict an epic giant monster that is stronger than apparently any other monster that came up to this point, that can do all this crazy stuff. <sighs> this is, this is intense, man. This is, yeah, it really is like this. Now, now personally, for me, I, I mean, I drew characters like this all the time when I was, you know, in school and just doodling in my book. Like, usually what I would do is I would draw, like, the ba like Monday I'd be in school and I'd draw the basic outline for a monster. And then Tuesday I'd be like, oh, it'd be cool if he had, like, dragon arms. And the next day I'd be like, oh, it'd be cool if he was part cyborg. That's what I usually did. But, uh, of course, I eventually graduated to, uh, not drawing characters, but, uh, drawing geography! So that's, that's something else, which, you know, could be vaguely interpreted as, a, as a vibrator and a JJ. so that's, yeah, that's a weird psychological thing. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, this is, 
This is Orochi's video. I, I hope that you can make sense of this. Did you understand what I was trying to convey? I hope you did. Um, I'm really pumped for this fight right now. It, it's gonna be great. It'd be really cool to at least see Saitama like, okay, he tries the, the normal punches a few times and he, and maybe that's the reason why he has so many snakes, you know, just like, oh, I have thousands of snakes and just boom, boom, boom. And he just obliterates the snakes and maybe they just bubble up and then grow back like a Toriko villain. And I would love to see Saitama, like, he has to express the serious face, because the thing is, Saitama's been kind of absent for a while. The last big epic thing he did, like, he did nothing for a while, and then he defeated, uh, Elder Centipede, and then he also did nothing for a while, and then he defeated Rover, kind of, but it was just not even, like, a big epic brawl, it was just like, boom, you're done, boom, you're done, boom, you're done, and, uh, now we're getting this. This is like, okay... Enough of the freaking foreplay on this. You want to see a, a balls to the wall Saitama fight, like a, like a Saitama fight on the same level when he fought Boros and Greater, where it's actually dragged out a little bit. It's not just like boom and you're done. Okay, it's been a while since we've gotten that. You know, Murata will freaking satisfy. He's like, all right, it's time we got it. And it's relatively early into the monster invasion, right, into the arc. You know, it's like we had a few battles with each of the S-Class. We got to see them do their thing. But uh, we haven't really gotten to the battles with the Cadres yet. And already Monster King Oroshi is, is showing his stuff. Now, you guys saw how big the hideout is for the Monster Association. You saw all the crazy things, like when Child Emperor did his Megazord and that leveled part of it. And then freaking Saitama punched Ro over through the thing. You, you saw all the damage that that thing's incurred. This place is going to be leveled by the end of it. This thing is just going to be a crater probably by the end of Saitama and Orochi's fight. All right. It's, it's going to be crazy. Ugh. And I'm ready to have just to be blown away by this in every conceivable way, shape and form, you know? So yeah. Um, what do you guys think about Monster King Orochi? I don't think you'll be able to properly put it into words, but hey, you know, invent new words. Monster King Orochi is blippity bruffs of Yeah. All right. Well, you, I need a drink. God dang. Okay. Mm. All right. You guys have a good one. I got some more One Punch Man videos coming up, but damn, I needed to talk about this, dude. Oh, that was cathartic. Okay. Have a good one, guys. Signing out.